Uh, as you've heard, my name is Wolfgang Wilms. I have to apologize to uh, talk in English. My Spanish is not good enough. We are learning that because we want to live here in this nice country in uh, one and a half year. So uh, I've put together a lecture today about uh, double... Me quiero disculpar porque este, hablo solo inglés y me gustaría aprender español para venir a vivir aquí. Y ahora voy a presentar la conferencia. I'm talking about double skin cladings today mainly. As I heard, that's something which is uh, we have a project here where students are working on. And um, we've got uh, about uh, 28 years experience in this field. We've built uh, claddings of this type which work and which don't work. Not everything is working as it should do. It depends on which... <laughs> Tengo 28 años de experiencia trabajando con revestimientos de doble piel y he construido algunos que han funcionado y otros que no y vamos a pasar a hablar de esas experiencias. I run in Germany a small office which uh, deals just with cladings. We consult, act as consultants and techni technical designers. We deliver ideas during architect architect architectural competitions Uh, so we are part of these competitions in the beginning, mm -hmm. and we've uh, carried out so far plus minus 200 projects over the last 25 years. So and I think now we go into the lecture itself. Uh, we not only look at double scene cladings. <laughs> Sorry. Tengo una pequeña oficina que se dedica este, especialmente a revestimientos y ayudamos a personas que concursan en di diferentes este, competencias y... <laughs> y bueno, ahí voy a pasar a, a describir cómo trabajamos. Ok. Um, the first of all is, uh, I think that's very important. What is a cladding? What is a curtain wall? It is... A cladding is defined as a non-load-bearing structural outer wall. That's very important. ¿De qué hablamos cuando hablamos de un revestimiento o de un muro cortina? Está definido como una pared estructural exterior que no soporta peso. Sometimes we are asked to um, use parts of the cladding to uh, carry structural parts. Um, I've... Um, In a project in Paris, uh, we've uh, had an accident. It was luckily not, uh, not our fault, where a part of the cladding was load-bearing, which is absolutely uncommon, and nobody knew that anymore, and it cost life. So I will never, ever do something like that. En una oportunidad en París se nos solicitó que hiciéramos un revestimiento que soportara peso, pero fue una mala experiencia porque costó vidas y nunca más lo volveremos a hacer. So that's one of the basics of the design. Um, how does it work? Uh, just to bring back into your mind what the cladding is good for, what the cladding shall do. ¿Para qué sirve? ¿Para qué es bueno un revestimiento? First of all, it's uh, beside the visual aspect, it's the weather protection of the building. Eh, protege el, el contra los eh, problemas climáticos. To get, to get it air and water tight. Eh, sirve para este, que no se filtre a, aire y agua. It's a thermal protection. Eh, tiene protección térmica, proporciona which, protección térmica. Which, as you know, is defined by the U-value, so the lower that value is, the less energy will be transferred. Cuanto menor es el valor, la menor, menor energía se va a, tra a transmitir. It is uh, good for uh, uh, solar protection. Es bueno para protección solar. I don't know the value you use here. We use a value which is called G-wert, so that is a very important factor and it gives you information about how much of the sun energy is being brought into the building. So the lower that value is, the better it is and the less you have to cool. That is, that's one of the key factors. Mm -hmm. Se utiliza un valor que se llama g word y este, implica la transmisión de energía. Cuanto menor es, eh, mejor resulta en cuanto a la transmisión de energía. 
The next one is uh, the cladding shall bring natural daylight into the building, which is uh, defined by the um, light transmission value called TL. Y el otro punto es la transmisión de la luz natural que se define como TL, que sería eh, transmisión de luz. Okay, it uh, is good for sound noise reduction from the outside. Se reduce la transmisión del sonido desde la parte exterior. Uh, natural ventilation, we had that before it was with the... Y permite la ventilación natural. Mostly ground floor, first floor is uh, safety requirements. Tiene requerimientos de seguridad en el piso, en la planta baja y en el primer piso. Appearance of the building. La apariencia del edificio. And uh, we'll show that with one example, cooling, heating in a decentral way. Y vamos a mostrarlo en un ejemplo, el enfriamiento y el calentamiento en una forma descentralizada. So, I like that picture. I've seen that in Valparaíso. I think that's what most architects understand when they talk about transparency. I love it. It's the most transparent building I've ever seen in my life, but I never, ever would like to work there. <laughs> I think the climate in there must be horrible. Ese edificio es en Valparaíso y sería como el sueño de la mayoría de los arquitectos, pero no le gustaría trabajar ahí. Okay, so that's, uh, uh, it's just an overview of what we are going through now. It's a different kind of uh, claddings, which is, uh, it's not um, always easy to define whether single skin or double skin, because sometimes we have an inner single glazed layer or whatever. We go through these nine types of uh, claddings, and I think we've covered most of it, and you've got an overview of what makes sense and what does not. Mm -hmm. okay. Ahora vamos a ver los diferentes sistemas de revestimientos que a veces no son eh, fáciles de definir porque hay de una sola piel o de doble piel este, y los vamos a ver ahora. The first is very simple, single skin, single skin uh, solar control glass, and that's it. De una sola piel y eh, pan, eh, vidrio de control solar eh, y es simple, es nada más que eso. The picture on the east shows the Vienna Twin Tower, and it is not one of our projects, but it was the, um, all the architects loved that building, and they came to us and said, can't you make it possible that we build something like that? And unfortunately, in Germany, I had to say, no, we can't. Mm -hmm. It's not uh, the uh, regulations don't allow for that. Okay. Ese es el Vienna Twin Tower que muchas personas eh, admiran mucho, pero que no es una obra de ellos y que no la pueden construir en Alemania. Ok, y ahora, realmente, una semana antes de que vine over, uno de los clientes que empezamos a trabajar juntos, él tiene ese edificio. Y un amigo mío, el arquitecto del nuevo the architect of the new project, who loves that, oh, you own that, you work in there, how is it? And the client just said, it's a disaster. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's an absolute disaster. It's too hot, and they have the, um, hold on. Uh, as, as that is very thin, it's just one uh, uh, transom. The uh, so noise reduction from one floor to the next floor just doesn't work. So they've got a, an architectural icon, but it doesn't work, and it makes life hard for them uh, to live in there, and we spend a lot of time in these buildings, so we should get that right. That's at least my opinion. Se reunió con la persona que es propietaria del edificio, y los que estaban reunidos allí le preguntaron qué tal era trabajar y vivir en, ese, en el edificio, y el cliente, que a su vez era el dueño del edificio, dijo que era un desastre porque hace demasiado calor y tampoco hay reducción de sonido porque simplemente no, no funciona. I mean, it's uh, uh, on the positive and negative side, uh, it's obvious that you have a very low investment because it's just, uh, just a double glazed unit and a, and a bit of aluminium. And uh, you obviously have a low maintenance, but all the rest of it is just... Uh, 
not what uh, building should supply to the user. Ok. En cuanto a el, 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 los, los puntos positivos, hay una, una baja inversión y también bajo mantenimiento, pero eso es casi lo único positivo que tiene porque después no, no funcionan los demás elementos. I think we have, uh, I think we have uh, as well in Montevideo, quite some examples. They are not as transparent. They use black glass. But that makes it, in my opinion, even worse. Mm -hmm que eh, no son transparentes, usan, usan vidrio, pero eso lo hace incluso peor. Hay ejemplos en Montevideo de este tipo de edificios. One of the three important factors we talked about before, which is the light transmission, is very low. La transmisión de la luz es muy, muy baja. So you have a fully glazed wall. Y por you... ah. Entonces hay este pared de vidrio total. But you have to switch on the light. I've seen that pero... in the bright summer. Pero igual hay que estar prendiendo las luces porque no se no, no pasa la luz. Surface, y cuando vamos a la temperatura de la superficie oscura perfect, y, y hay este valores U de muy muy escasos muy malos. You realize how much uh, heat is being transferred into the building. Y se, se puede uno dar cuenta de la cantidad de calor que se tiene que transferir al edificio. Ok. Sí, no tengo una foto. Es lo mismo que teníamos antes, solo con las inner blinds, que tal vez reflejan o lo que sea. Hay como persianas internas que reflejan este, el, el sol. Así que es el... Makes it even worse than the example before because the heat or uh, sunlight converts to heat as soon as it hits material. So we've got the uh, sun blends on, on the, the inner side there, and uh, that's where we become a very hot surface. Se convierte la luz solar inmediatamente en calor y eso hace que se caliente toda la estructura y se vuelve muy, muy caluroso. You can make something like that work. Se puede hacer que algo así funcione. If you do it like that. Si se hace en esta forma. You still have the inner blinds. Todavía se tienen las persianas interiores. They have a, a bit of a get, gap between the uh, uh, a bit of a gap between the uh, double or triple glazed unit and the blind to get the air moving. Hay una pequeña brecha entre, las, entre la pared y la, el revestimiento para que el, el aire pueda circular. And you introduce flaps to let the air in and out. Y se introducen eh, brechas para que se pueda este, permitir que el aire circule para arriba y para abajo. That works, but it's very expensive. Eso funciona, pero es sumamente costoso. When you look at this detail, Uh, you see these are the openable lights. That's where the warm air is coming up. These are special blinds which reflect a lot of the light and they are f uh, shaped to uh, uh, bring daylight deeper into the room. There's a patented system, so that, that costs an awful lot of money. We're talking about, in Germany, something like 200 or in, in dollars, just a thing something like uh, uh, $300 a square meter for that. Uh, uh, that is uh, uh, very expensive with all these flaps. We've got openable lights here. Ahí, ahí este, se, se permite mediante esas este, pequeñas eh, aletas que pase el aire, pero cuestan alrededor de 300 dólares el metro cuadrado, lo cual hace que el sistema de ventilación sea sumamente costoso. So I go back one uh, picture. When you see the surface treatment here, That is uh, uh, something very special, with, which also is very expensive in the order of 300 plus dollars a square meter. Eh, ahí se ven en, en la foto, se ven las este, aletas por las cuales penetra el aire, que son, esos son el, el tipo de, de superficie que cuesta 300, metros, 300 dólares el metro cuadrado. So uh, that solution works, but it's definitely more expensive than a, a twin phase cladding. Es más, es, es más costoso en el, en, el, en el sistema de una sola piel de revestimiento. 
Okay, now we come to a cladding. Uh, I, I'm not sure here. Is it a double skin or is it a single skin? No, está seguro si es de doble piel o de una sola piel. It's uh, a solution which comes uh, from um, the times where you had either just single glazing or very poor double glazed units, and you had. Uh, uh, very low when you are in cold environments you had very low temperatures on the inner uh, 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 face of the, uh, the uh, glass pane eh, viene del tiempo en que no se sabe si era una sola piel un solo panel o doble pero muy pobre en su construcción y, y provoca ese tipo de, de problemas que este Es conveniente en invierno, pero y un poco mejor de reducción del sonido, pero no mucho. So, uh, what, what's been done here is, uh, you've got your, your outer uh, double glazed uh, unit, you've got the void, and you've got an inner single glazed uh, pane. Tenemos este, un, un solo este, panel de vidrio. And on top, they, en la parte superior, they suck out the air which has the possibility to get in to that void at the bottom. Se, se, se chupa el aire que se podría haber este, juntado en, el, en ese espacio. This way you, you get a very comfortable temperature on the inner face. Y de esa forma se obtiene una temperatura agradable en la parte interior. An example is the old airport uh, Chermitievo Ions in Moscow, which would not have worked without that system. Un ejemplo de esto es el aeropuerto de Moscú que no hubiera podido funcionar si no fuera por este sistema. But with the quality of glass we have now, con la calidad de vidrio que tenemos ahora, uh, systems like that are just obsolete. We don't need them anymore. Ya son obsoletos y no se necesitan más. That's the exa that's the uh, technical drawing of uh, this project. Este es el dibujo técnico de este proyecto. I don't understand what they did there. We had to, we designed that for a metal cladding company, so not as a consultant. Uh, as warm air is going up, you normally suck it out at the top. They do it just the other way around. En la medida, ah, en la medida que el aire caliente sube, este, se va, pero ellos hicieron justamente lo contrario. So I'm not sure whether that really works properly. I would never ever build something like that. Por lo tanto, no estoy seguro si eso funciona bien y nunca hubiera construido una cosa así. As a consultant. Yeah. Como consultante. Okay. Next one is uh, something very typical. You've got your uh, glazed cladding. Tenem you've got, so, tenemos un revestimiento de vidrio. And you've got your outer screen. Y tenemos una pantalla exterior. The outer sun blinds. Yeah, sí. so that's typical for Germany. Uh, it gives, uh, you have a lot of daylight in there. You keep the heat out with the outer sun blinds. That's perfect. Es típico de Alemania. Se mantiene el calor adentro y, y, y se mantiene la luz. Se deja pasar la luz. And it works on a building like that, which is not too high, because uh, sun blinds are always um, uh, uh, have always problems when it become, uh, when we are getting higher wind speeds. So. And when you get high up in a building, uh, you enter uh, problems which you could solve possibly via, via uh, double skin cladding. Eh, hay problemas cuando hay mucho viento y este y se puede solucionar con el, tem el sistema del doble revestimiento. So that uh, building is a low budget building which won an uh, architectural prize in Germany. Este es un edificio de bajo este presupuesto que ganó un premio en, en Alemania. As you can see here on this uh, on this drawing is a straightforward st stick system uh, with uh, precast concrete on the outside. Uh, can you repeat? Uh, the uh, is a st straightforward stick system, which is a um, kind of a, a curtain wall type, and uh, you've got uh, the um, concrete. What you see on the outside is not. Made on site, it's a precast in a factory. Es un sistema de concreto que se ve desde la parte exterior. We will be talking later in this lecture about um, tolerances. 
Vamos a hablar más tarde de tolerancias. Tolerancias of the structure and uh, what you see here when you when you look at the profiles they are uh, thin on the inside and they have uh, the typical 50 or 60 millimeters on the outside. Son sistemas que tienen eh, 60 milímetros en la parte exterior. And that is in this case not an architectural gimmick. It is uh, uh, based on the different tolerances of in situ concrete, which is that one, it's made on site, and of the precast stuff, which is on the outside. Se basa en las tolerancias del concreto en la parte exterior y en la parte interior. So on the outside you have tolerances of about, let's say, 10, 15 millimeters at the max. En la parte exterior, tolerancias de 10 milímetros. On the inside you have tolerances of, of about uh, 30 millimeters. En la parte interior, tolerancia de, de alrededor de 30 milímetros. And the shape of the cladding can accommodate both. Y la sombra del revestimiento puede contener las dos. Okay. So now we come to the real double skin uh, cladding. That's not a project of us. Um, the ones we've built, I didn't. It's a long time ago, so I didn't have photos. Um, Ahora vamos a la de a las verdaderas este, doble revestimientos. So uh, that's a building which has just a glass skin wrapped around. Tiene solamente como un revestimiento de vidrio eh, que lo envuelve por alrededor. It's not one of our, our projects, and mm. it's not in Germany. No, es uno de nuestros proyectos y no fue hecho en Alemania. We would not be allowed to build something like that, as in case of fire, you would have a smoke spread all over the whole building. No se nos permitiría construir un edificio como ese por el tema de peligros de incendio y el humo se esparciría rápidamente para todos lados. You get very high air speeds within the gap. Hay muy altos. Eh, Claro, la rapidez del aire al moverse, yeah. sí. That means uh, if you open your window, uh, it's inconvenient, but if the guy the next floor further up opens the window, he can understand everything you say. Si uno abre la ventana, la persona que está en el, en, en el piso superior podría escuchar absolutamente todo lo que uno dice. So the only uh, situation I can imagine to use such a cladding is uh, when we have uh, lo uh, loud outer areas like uh, motorways or whatever, then you can use something like that. En la única circunstancia en que se podría usar este tipo de revestimiento es cuando se está en una zona de autopistas en las cuales este va a haber mucho ruido exterior y no no importa que se oiga lo que sale de adentro del edificio. If not, don't build something like that. It doesn't work for the people using the building. Sí, no, no, no es conveniente construir un edificio así. So that's a, a similar type of cladding. So you, we've got a outer single uh, glassed uh, uh, layer. We've got a wide gap in between. We've got a separation on every floor. Hay una separación en cada este piso del mismo tipo de doble eh, revestimiento. And then we've got the double or triple glazed inner face. Podemos tener doble o triple paneles en, en la parte de la fachada. It's controlled air intake and air outlet. Hay este entrada y salida de aire controlada. Uh, it's a massive waste of space. Sorry. It's a massive waste of space. Ah, que se, eh, se, se malgasta espacio en, en gran cantidad. Maintenance is very uh, um, maintenance cost is very high. El costo de mantenimiento es sumamente alto. It looks spectacular. <laughs> Pero se ve espectacular. <laughs> it's in Düsseldorf. It was unfortunately not our building, but uh, we've been involved uh, in, in side parts of that. Uh, it's a spectacular building. Es un doesn't edificio make... espectacular, aunque no lo hayamos. Unfortunately, it doesn't make too much sense anymore today. No tiene mucho sentido actualmente. And unfortunately, we don't have uh, clients anymore in Germany who are prepared to pay for that. Y lamentablemente no tenemos clientes que estén preparados a pagar el costo de semejante obra. So, so we are lucky to have something like that. Así que tenemos suerte de tener algo así. So now it becomes a bit more complicated. 
Ahora uh, se convierte un poco más complicado. Uh, we come to a, a, a double skin type of clothing which is concealed. Ve, ahora vamos a ver un tipo de doble revestimiento que está como escondido. Uh, so the void between the inner insulated layer and the outer single a singleness layer is uh, not ventilated it's uh, closed el, la, la cámara digamos que va entre cada uno de los revestimientos no está ventilada sino que está cerrada that means the maintenance is more or less like a typical uh, a single wall you've got to, to, to clean the inner face and the outer face and that's it hay que el mantenimiento consiste en limpiar la parte exterior y la parte interior y eso es todo The building is, uh, uh, I think, nearly 10 years old now, and um, or we started designing it 10 years ago. And um, empezamos el diseño eh, hace unos 10 años. The thermal performance of the outer wall with a uh, uh, U value for the uh, complete unit was 1.0 at the time. That was spectacular. El, el, el performance fue de 1.0 que fue espectacular por Dios. At, at time, yeah. ah, en ese momento. And when you look at the detailing here, it's something um, how can I explain it? Uh, during the competition phase, um, there was the uh, the architect who is a very good friend of mine. He wanted a, a picture frame and en, he did sorry. En el momento de la competencia el arquitecto que lo diseñaba quería un Uh, un marco. Yeah. So very thin, very fine, and he didn't want to see the slabs, the, the, the floor slabs. Y no quería ver los, los pisos. And he didn't want to see uh, kind of window profiles on the inside. So the top and the bottom of the floor, he wanted that to have just run through and end in glass. <coughs> No quería tener perfiles superiores ni inferiores y quería que el piso llegara justo hasta el vidrio. The client wanted to have openable windows. El cliente quería tener ventanas que se pudieran so abrir. So when that is flush here, uh -huh. and you don't want to see any uh, profiles on the inside, you have to open outwards. There's no other chance. No quería, hay que abrir las ventanas hacia adentro. No hay otra forma de hacerlo. So, I'll come back to that later. Here you see that. Uh, you really can't see the floors, even if you have that. You've got your picture frames, and you very good, easily see here how it works. So, every second unit, uh, the complete glass wall opens outwards electrically. That's just la, amazing. La, la, totalmente la, la, la pared de, de vidrio se, se abre hacia el costado. And uh, I go back. Hacia afuera. You see the, the, the inner uh, uh, double glazed part here. So the, that's the window type. So the complete thing moves out. That, that opens outwards completely. Se abre hacia afuera completamente. <coughs> Uh, about every two years you have to get into the void. Cada dos años hay que por, eh, meterse dentro de la pared. And to do that you can open just the outer part of it. Y para hacer eso solamente se puede abrir la parte exterior. You, you can see it on this picture up here. That's where they are from the cradle. Ahí se ve en la grúa que están por entrar. It's a bit tricky. So they drive up, they start opening the, the glass, and then they slide in a part of the cradle into that. that uh, Suben hasta arriba, se deslizan por el vidrio, se abre y entra. So the, the cladding, uh, in my opinion, looks very good. It, it performs very good. We've built it twice, but we won't do it anymore. Eh, en mi opinión el revestimiento se ve muy bien este, lo hicimos dos veces pero no lo vamos a volver a hacer Because, uh, to maintain that type of cladding you have to be very careful and you have to uh, do really think what you do and uh, we've uh, created special tools to open up these outer panes and you can't, can remove these tools only if everything is Closed properly and everything is safe. 
Es muy difícil mantener este tipo de construcciones porque hay que crear la, este, las máquinas especiales para hacerlo, hay que tener mucho cuidado para la limpieza, hay que abrirlo con cuidado. Some maintenance people think, uh, or other opinion, they should earn more money in being quicker. Algunas personas de mantenimiento dicen que deberían ganar más dinero por ser más rápidos. So they've amended or changed the tools. Por lo tanto, han corregido o cambiado las herramientas. To work faster. Para trabajar más rápido. And that resulted in a not properly closed window. Y eso tuvo como consecuencia que las ventanas no fueron cerradas en forma apropiada. Which after heavy wind ended on the road. Que después de mucho viento terminó mal. It's impressive how far it can fly. <laughs> so uh, uh, nobody was hurt. Uh, it was okay. We were lucky. But, Por suerte nadie salió lastimado y tuvimos suerte. Uh, there's just the uh, uh, the um, maintenance people are not uh, on that level they should be. On the other project where we've carried out that, they are very good, they are very reliable, and they really know what they do. But on that one, unfortunately, not. In this edificio, the personnel of maintenance no was not at the level of what they should be. In other occasions, they are much more confiable. There's another impression when you look up. It's a it's a glazed roof up there. Uh, there, the, the format of the glazing, which is six by one meter, is un formato de seis metros por uno. It's just dictated by um, uh, uh, cost because the, the width is very small with one meter, and el, that it dictates the el, thickness of the glass. Las dimensiones las dicta el costo y por eso eh, esa es el ancho del, del vidrio. In the other direction, we took as much as we could get, which in this case was six meters. Hicimos lo que pudimos, que en este caso fue seis metros. Okay. So yet, uh, now we come to the uh, type of uh, double skin which I prefer. And Acá which, llegamos al tipo de doble revestimiento que yo prefiero. And which I think we have reduced to the absolute minimum. Que hemos reducido al mínimo más absoluto. So it's the, uh, uh, the double glaze inner layer. You've got the void, uh, which is a bit offset towards the outer single glass layer. That type of cladding, you've got uh, 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 an air uh, intake at the bottom and an air outlet at the top. Hay una entrada de aire en la, en la parte inferior y una salida en la parte superior. They are offset, so you don't have a ray infiltration. Eh, no hay una gran infiltración. Uh, uh, so uh, just go to the technical drawing in this case. Uh, so we've got again; it's the same architect as the previous one. He wanted again his picture frame, which is only 32 millimeters es wide. Es el mismo arquitecto que en la ocasión anterior que también quería su porta retratos. And uh, normally you have louvers and stuff like that to get the air in and get the air out. Normalmente hay este, elementos para entrar, hacer entrar el aire y hacerlo salir. We decided not to use that. We just did a cutout of the glass at the bottom. Y simplemente cortamos el vidrio en la parte inferior. And at the top. Y en la parte superior. So the, the glass pane itself has a shape like el, that. Por lo tanto, el panel de vidrio tiene una forma como esta. It's difficult esto. for me to use that um, And we've tested it and we've uh, got the calculations done about the airflow, about the temperature. Temperatures in the void and everything, so it works. Y lo testeamos e hicimos cálculos sobre el flujo de aire en la parte inferior, en la parte superior, y, y funcionó. Yeah, that's the uh, type of detailing we have here. Um, uh, I think that's the important. That's the horizontal section. Uh, what you see here is, uh, it is not far away from just uh, aluminium. Window. That's all it is. Esto no es muy diferente de una ventana de aluminio. En realidad es lo que es. Something, something similar you can buy from every catalog, like Shuko or whatever. Se puede comprar algo similar en cualquier catálogo. Then you add something to the outside. Luego se agrega algo a la parte exterior. Which holds the outer pane of glass. Que sostiene la, el panel exterior de vidrio. And that's it. You're done. Y eso es todo. 
Okay, that's a very simple solution. Virtually everybody can do that. It works perfect. We thought uh, here uh, we get some some water in here because it's uh, quite a high. 120 millimeters is uh, quite a high gap up there. The water it's is coming in there, but it doesn't hurt. The, the building is black. Metal is black. Es una solución buena. Este, dejamos entrar un poco de agua, pero no se nota porque el, el edificio es negro y funciona perfecto. Yeah, but we don't see any dirt or anything. It, it really works. Trabaja muy bien y no se ve nada. So uh, the unfortunate thing is uh, the architect is building a uh, very big uh, office block in um, Istanbul. El arquitecto está construyendo un, un edificio muy grande en Estambul. He's got to know how now. And uh, it's that cladding, but we are not involved. <laughs> so they're building the same thing. Están construyendo lo mismo. It's a bit unfortunate, but okay, that's how it is. Uh, that's something which might be uh, one uh, step in the future. Esto es algo que puede estar un paso adelante en el futuro. That's a mix of a cladding type we've seen before. Es una mezcla de un tipo de revestimiento que vimos anteriormente. Con just a single skin cladding. Con un eh, con un revestimiento de una sola de un solo panel. With uh, panels, the the big big red areas here. Con paneles en las partes rojas. Which are the decentralized heating, cooling, whatsoever. Que son las partes descentralizadas para el calentar y enfriar el edificio. So each of these units uh, with the, the red panels here. Es cada unidad que son los paneles rojos. Has uh, one of these cooling, heating, air supply uh, devices. Que tienen uno de estos este, elementos para eh, calentar y enfriar la temperatura. So when you deliver that to site. Por lo tanto, cuando uno lo hace funcionar. The uh, technical bit is installed as well. El, la parte técnica is installed ah, se instala también. as well, okay? Uh, to have the alternating uh, double skin, single skin, you end up with this meander. Para, ah, para alternar la parte de doble paneles con la de uno solo, Llegamos a eso. So technically, that's that's a, the uh, a critical bit. Técnicamente, esa es la parte más crítica. But in this case, we uh, we solved it and it works. En este caso, lo solucionamos y funciona perfecto. Especially the problem area is here, where you, up here you've got the insulation out here. Acá but, tenemos la parte de la el aislamiento. And here, uh, uh, one further down, it's on the inner on the inner layer. En la parte de la capa interior. So that's uh, that's uh, just a blow up of the horizontal section. Es una un sec una sección horizontal. Where you as well see that meandro. Ahí donde se ve ese meandro. So now we come to um, a cladding type which has nothing to do with um, double skin, which is uh, which relies on um, the improvement of the glass industry. Ahora vamos a pasar a algo que no tiene nada que ver con el doble revestimiento, sino que tiene que ver con la mejora de el, el glass industry. de la yeah. industria del vidrio. Okay. Uh, just a, a few profiles unos pocos perfiles from the past. del so pasado. That's, that's about 20 years ago. So you've got a, a bit of Alrededor de, 20, de hace 20 años. You've got a bit of insulation. Hay un poco de aislamiento. And you've got lots of metal. Y mucho metal. A few years later, it looked like that. Unos años después se ve como se muestra. And then it became even more of insulating. Y ahora, y ahora hay incluso más aislamiento. And now we are there. Y ahora estamos aquí. So what you see is that the structural aluminium part. Lo que se ve es que la estructura was reduced further every time. se fue reduciendo un poco más cada vez. 
So the next step would be El próximo paso sería something like that, a composite wall. Una composite wall, una pared compuesta. Compuest. It is Uh, that's, that's a project which has been carried out in Holland. Uh, este es un proyecto que se ha estado llevando a cabo en Holanda. We have not been involved there, but we support this company in bringing in that type of technology to Germany. No lo hemos hecho nosotros, pero estamos tratando de introducir este tipo de tecnología en Alemania. And obviously improving that a bit. Y en, obviamente mejorándolo un poco. So that's basically how it looks like. Y básicamente así es como se ve. If anybody is familiar with boat building, we do that type of uh, stuff there since I don't know, 60, 70 years. So it's um, uh, glass fiber. Es de fibra de vidrio. With resin. Resin. Ah, con resina, con resina. Resin. Uh, with a core. With a, with a core of insulation. Con un núcleo que tiene aislantes. So basically, what we've seen before, we had a structural parts which have have been reduced permanently over the years, and Tenem, that is. Tenemos so, partes estructurales que se han vi, bien, venido reduciendo con el pasar de los años. And that is a structural use of insulation. Y esta es el, la estructura que hacemos para el aislamiento. Then introduced. Uh, um, High grade windows. E introducimos este, ventanas de alto grado, de alta gama. When we go, when we go back, we we have a glazed area of about 50% only with this design. Tenemos áreas de de vidrio de un 60%. And with a glass which is now being introduced to the market, so it will be available in about three months con vidrio que se está introduciendo ahora en el mercado y que va a estar disponible dentro de unos tres meses. We have a performance of this wall which is similar to a double skin cladding. Tenemos un funcionamiento de este tipo de paredes que es similar al de los dobles revestimientos. When the sun blinds are down. Cuando las persianas están bajas. So uh, we right now we are in the competition phase of an investors competition. En este momento estamos en la parte de competición de inversiones. Si podemos llegar a construirlo, vamos a poder probar que no necesitamos doble revestimiento más. Es una compañía holandesa. Um, Uh, the only drawback is it is uh, not a non-inflammable material. El único inconveniente es, o el mayor inconveniente es que no es no inflamable. So we, uh, in Germany, we are limited to a building height of a bit over 20 meters. Por lo tanto, en Alemania estamos limitados a una construcción que no puede sobrepasar los 20 metros. Okay. That's just an impression. How it might look like on the inside Acá es una impresión de cómo se vería en la parte interior. So now, um, bef uh, we've talked now only about uh, outer walls, about claddings, which have a grid system to them. Hablamos de revestimientos que tienen un sistema a través de ellos de ventilación. The conventional way of building means you uh, uh, build the structure You take measurements, you manufacture the windows, and you bring them in. Se construye la estructura, se miden las ventanas, se las manufactura y se las coloca. As soon as you impose a grid system to a building, you can't do that anymore. En cuanto se instala el, ese sistema, no se puede hacer más. So you have a very precise outer uh, uh, structure. Por lo tanto, hay una, una estructura externa muy precisa. Y tenemos la estructura interna que soporta el edificio dentro de ese sistema, which is much more que es mucho más impreciso. So, uh, uh, within the following files, I will show you. Uh, we go into the production of um, metal claddings to see the precise the precision project, uh, process, and after that, 
uh, uh, I will show ways of overcoming the different tolerances of the outside and the inside. Vamos a, ir a, a, vamos a estar viendo la parte de precisión de la construcción de las estructuras y les voy a ir mostrando este, cómo ir eh, solucionando los problemas de eh, las tolerancias. Ok. So, first of all, what do you have to do to get to a fabrication of a curtain wall? Obviously. ¿Qué tenemos que hacer para construir un muro cortina? Obviously, the technical design. Obviamente, el diseño técnico. The production of the extrusions. La producción de la extrusión. I have that point here because um, uh, the bigger the projects are, the freer you are in what you design. Cuanto más grande es el proyecto, más libre se es para diseñarlo. Because you can custom design all the profiles for your project. Porque se pueden hacer a medida los perfiles del proyecto. The next is the testing process. El proceso de testeado. The surface treatment. El tratamiento de la superficie. Fabrication. Fabricación. Assembly. Ensamblado. Transport. Transporte. And insulation. E instalación. So we just do a quick run of a few faults. Uh, do, you, do you know about that? Or? No, okay. So we just a quick run how you do that, how you get to an extrusion, and how you get to it uh, to the precision. Okay, that's where you start with. So that uh, these are massive aluminium blocks. Hay bloques de aluminio masivos. The diameter of this block dictates how big your extrusion can be. El diámetro de los mismos indica qué tan grande la extrusión puede ser. They are preheated. Preheated. Heated. Ah, se calientan, se precalientan en la planta de extrusión. And come into the extrusion press, like you see here. Van a la prensa. Eh, sí, la prensa de extrusión. It, it's a, yeah, it's a fairly brutal process. Here you see the the extrusion coming out. On the other side, as we've seen here, is the. Se ve la extrusión saliendo por el otro lado. It's, uh, it's like making churros <laughs> with a bit more power. <laughs> okay, what you see here is uh, there's about a 20 meter long extrusion coming out of that press. Hay una extrusión de unos 20 metros saliendo de la prensa. And it does not have the shape which it should. Y no tiene la, la forma, ¿no? ¿no? It gets its form when it's straightened. Que cobra su forma cuando se lo endereza. Because it's uh, uh, it's not very straight when it comes out. It's like no es muy de, no sale muy derecho cuando sale de la prensa. Okay, so there's stretches there, and uh, that's just a quick overview. We, we go over to testing. So that's Después a test. Pasamos a la parte del testeado. At a testing plant in South Germany at Gartner. Se testea en el sur de that is the test unit for the um, uh, compound cladding. Esa es una unidad de testeo. And all our know-how lays in that bit. That's a know-how. El problema right. reside en las juntas. That has to be solved. What we see here is uh, more or less the American way of doing it. So este es el modo americano de hacerlo, lo que vemos aquí. Having the units coming together and somebody comes with a silicon gun and does Las it. unidades se ponen, se, se ponen una al lado de la otra y viene alguien con una este, pistola de silicona. But that's a maintenance joint. You have to, uh, after five years, you have to go over every year and see whether it still works or whether you El have problema to de eso es que hay que testearlo y cada año o cada cinco años hay que ver cómo está y volver a hacer el proceso. They call it very sophisticated rubber pencil test. Rubber? Pencil. Ah. Le llaman eh, rubber pencil. Test. Test. So that means somebody is taking a pencil, pressing in. If it moves in, cut it out and redo it. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Esa es la forma. Con un lápiz lo pinchan. <laughs> yeah, the Americans call it rubber pencil test. Yes, they do. Okay. 
we, we do it in a different way. We do it with guest kits, and it works uh, for ages, and it can take much more movement because when we've got a cladding, Lo hacen de otra forma, puede tener más movimiento. It, it's called curtain wall because it's like a curtain, it hangs. Es como una cortina y cuelga. And if the, the structure moves, and if the structure moves, obviously you've got movements, and with a gasket you can take these movements, and with silicone, just in a very limited way. Se hace mucho mejor porque puede tener movimiento y la silicona. Okay. So that's when the artificial rain starts. Lluvia artificial. And here you see why we do the test. Y acá se ve por qué hacemos el test. There's a bit of water in there which does not belong there. Hay agua ahí que no debería estar. So the uh, gasket had to be redesigned to get it right. Y habría que regularlo para solucionarlo. Okay. Just a quick run through production. That's prefabricated stuff. Extrusiones prefabricadas. Uh, another impression of how that looks like frame assembly that's in this case ensamblan, curved glass ensamblan las, eh, las, 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 los marcos Ahí and hay some blinds waiting for installation persianas para instalar para la, el aislamiento uh, assembly of the la unit. línea de ensamblaje storage after te uh, rough testing of the unit después de testearlo se almacena and, and ready for transport y finalmente está listo para transportarlo al sitio so now we come to the bit where uh, it decides whether you earn money or you lose money as a cleaning company acá es donde se sabe si uno gana dinero o pierde dinero como compañía so that's the gap. That's two elliptical shaped parts being combined together. Hay formas eh, elípticas que se tienen que combinar juntas. As you see here, the uh, brackets, so the parts which carry the cladding, are pre-installed. Ahí están las, los soportes que van a sostener eh, el vidrio. Yeah. Uh, due to the shape of the building, the uh, adjustment is a bit complicated. El ajuste es un poco complicado y es lo que da la forma al edificio. So we prepared uh, laser cut metal parts of about, I can't remember, six, seven meters wide. Se cortan partes um, con láser. With cutouts for, seis, for the brackets. Can you repeat? Uh, uh, we've designed um, um, uh, steel templates se diseñan eh, temple, templados de acero I can't remember, six or seven, seven, plantillas de acero uh, uh, wide with de cut siete metros de ancho for the brackets and they just had to adjust to the grid system these uh, metal plates it was para que las, las placas de metal se ajusten al sistema ok, here it becomes a bit interesting, so uh, that's a device which is able to take the uh, different tolerances between the structure, which is concrete, which may vary by plus minus three. Acá hay que fijarse en las tolerancias entre el concreto, que uh, puede variar. Plus minus three centimeters. Por más o menos tres centímetros. That's what the normalization says in Germany. The concrete builder is not allowed to have more. Dicen las, las, eh, las reglas eh, normativas de Alemania que no pueden tener más de tres centímetros. So, yeah, so Entonces, rails, eso se pueden ajustar en forma lateral. In, in and out where these, uh, están esas ranuras que se ven ahí? Up and down where are these metal bars. Arriba y abajo están esas and the cutouts, cut as you can see here, vary in size. Y varían en tamaño. That one is a bit narrower, narrower than that, than this one. Hay unas que son más angostas que las otras. So this one is a fixed point. Una es un punto fijo. And this one takes the thermal deflection of the unit. Y la otra es la que soporta la, el movimiento de la unidad. And once all that is adjusted before the installation. Se ajustan antes de la instalación. It's a very quick process to close a building. Es un proceso 
difícil cerrar el edificio. And they show you how easy that is. So that's a delivery. It was a, a, a building site right in the middle of Düsseldorf at the end of the famous Kö. Es un lugar de construcción justo en el medio de Düsseldorf. And there was no space to store cladding whatsoever, so it was just in time delivery. No había lugar donde almacenar eh, nada, entonces hubo que colocarlo in, inmediatamente después que se entregó. So these are ground floor units, they are about five meters high. Son eh, partes de alrededor de cinco metros de alto. Uh, now we show the process of lifting them up and bringing them into position. Y ahora estamos viendo el proceso de levantar los los vidrios y colocarlos. So the unit hangs on the on the crane. La unidad cuelga de la grúa. Fixed at these uh, two devices here. Y se coloca, se fija en esos dos elementos que hay. Which are not only for lifting, they are also used for interlocking, structurally interlocking the units. Que no solamente se usan para levantar, sino también para ensamblar las piezas. So that's the the guys who uh, uh, take the units and slide them into the pre-adjusted brackets. Y ellos son los funcionales, los obreros que se encargan de colocar la, los paneles. Uh -huh. Lower it down, you see the parts which uh, are the load-bearing parts on the unit itself. Ahí están the, las partes que soportan ones. el peso. Yeah, a bit of grease make, makes life easier. <laughs> Un poco de grasa hace la vida más fácil. And that's it. The unit sits. It takes, it takes 10, 15 minutes. Not sí. for the first unit, but for the next one. Lleva 10 o 15 minutos instalar cada unidad. You see here the interlocking parts, so the next unit just slides over it. And hangs on top. So, the system one, once it's sl slid in, you're done. That's it. Una unidad se 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 coloca sobre la otra y ya quedan todas colocadas. That's how it looks at the bottom. So that's the the first unit. It has two fixing e parts. All the other units have. Esa es one. la primera unidad que se coloca que tiene dos partes de, de anclado y las otras se van colocando directamente sobre la primera unidad. Sliding in the second one. Ahí se colocó la segunda. And that's the of one hour. Y eso que se ve es el resultado de una hora de trabajo. Okay. So we had meetings there on the side office, and they started installing a floor on one side, and after three hours, when the meeting finished, the, store, the, the, the floor was just closed. Ah, después de tres horas de trabajo, la oficina queda totalmente cerrada. You see how the horizontal brackets, they are just off the roll. They just bring it on. Uh -huh. Solamente, sí, simplemente los, los conecta. The finishing of the inside with some bent metal and that's it. El, el terminado de interior es colocando los, los okay. tornillos. So that's how it goes. Up Así es como se trabaja. You see it's installed with mobile cranes. That's just because there was not enough crane time with the tower cranes. Se usan estas grúas móviles porque no, no había lugar para poner otras. Ok, now I think we come to the nice part, showing the finished products, how they look like. Esta es la mejor parte que muestra el producto terminado y cómo se ve. That's building uh, with the night illumination. Con la iluminación nocturna. And it's not only the tower, it's also the old part and the, uh, which is being brought together with a new part via this glazed roof. No es solamente la obra nueva, sino que también se ve el edificio antiguo que se en alguna de alguna forma se puso junto con el anterior, con el nuevo. We are very, very proud of that building because the animation at the time time of the um, architecture competition and then what is being built is just it looks the same. Eh, estamos muy orgullosos del edificio porque la parte de verlo como luce al final es lo más emocionante. Unfortunately, it was so much work for everybody, civil engineer, architect for us, that uh, only the investor and some money, everybody else had a black zero. Lamentablemente, solo el inversor obtuvo alguna ganancia. Okay. Just different impressions. 
What I like about these sunglasses is okay, that they are, have this changing effect visually. Lo que le gusta es el efecto cambiante visualmente. That's the other building which we've uh, uh, discussed before. Uh, with este, the, este edificio uh, ya lo discutimos anteriormente. To the maximum re reduced double uh, skin cladding. Donde se reduce al máximo el doble revestimiento. That's uh, the competition. It was silver at that time. Esta fue la competencia. And that's how it looks like carried yeah. out. Y así, Being es, black now. y así es como se ve una vez terminada. That is as well part of the uh, complete ensemble. Es parte de todo el conjunto. It would be interesting to talk about that, but we won't have the time to do that. Sería interesante hablar de esto, pero no vamos a tener tiempo. Again, the drawings. Just think. So these are impressions where you very easily see how it looks like the air intake. Acá se ve perfectamente cómo se ve la entrada y salida, evitando la reinfiltración. So and then uh, there's something I think the pictures are yeah they are coming. So uh, at the uh, design phase, one of the architects had an idea on his table, sketching that these stairs move. En la parte del diseño, uno de los arquitectos tuvo la idea de que las escaleras se movieran to form an entrance to a ballroom. para hacer como si fuera una entrada a un ballroom. Ball a ballroom. Ah, ballroom, okay. ah. ballroom. Ah, ballroom. Ah, ballroom. Ah, y salón de baile, ¿no? Por eso me parece. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Okay. <laughs> And um, uh, he, he, was, uh, he was in opinion nobody would ever build that. Y decía que nadie lo iba a construir. And didn't show it to his, uh, how do you call it, the owners of the studio Arquitectura, and he didn't show it to the investor. He didn't, no se lo mostró a nadie. So I saw that and encouraged him and said, come on, that's what that building needs. Y en cambio yo lo, le, le, se lo fomenté y le dije, sí, sí, and preséntalo que, es esto es, it. que esto es lo that's que necesito. It. Y ahí está el resultado. And it's spectacular. <laughs> I think it's the best ballroom entrance I've ever seen. Dice que es la mejor entrada a una sala de baile que que haya visto. And uh, I especially love that picture here yeah, because that's the glazed roof above the ballroom. Este es el techo de la sala de baile. Hmm? It's in this row. Like the, like the other one, the elliptical stuff is all this sort of. So that's a uh, part of my life where I concentrated of a, uh, on a local area. And we've done some nice projects. Y so, hemos hecho unos proyectos buenos. so here we've got that glazed roof. And uh, it's obviously people have to be able to walk across. La gente tiene que poder caminar sobre el techo de vidrio. You've got the Congress underneath and they are the, the owners of the building were afraid that people look up some of the Tenían el congreso en la, en la abajo de eso y I think some of the females wouldn't like that. Y tenían miedo que los estuvieran viendo. But that, that was not the main problem. The main problem was noise. So when you walk across you hear that underneath. El peor problema era el ruido porque cuando uno camina sobre eso se siente todo el ruido abajo. So we saw that in uh, saying okay, let's lower it up, uh, lower it down and put some water on top. Entonces decidimos bajarlo y poner un poco de agua encima. The water is uh, you still can walk across, but water is not very deep, but you get wet feet. <laughs> Todavía igual se puede caminar por encima, pero se moja porque es bajito, pero And the water is really good for the project. Y el agua es muy buena para el proyecto. It acts as a cooling surface. Actúa for, como una superficie de enfriado. For the ballroom in the summer. Para el, la sala de baile en verano. It protects the gaskets. Protege, the silicon jars in this case. Protege las eh, juntas de silicona. Typically, you have uh, surface surface temperatures of plus 80 degrees in the summer and minus 20 degrees in the winter. So it's a delta of 100, 100 degrees. Sorry. Hay, sub, hay más de 80 grados en verano y menos de 20 en invierno Fahrenheit. ¿no? 
Fahrenheit, pero no sé la conversión. So that's quite a bit. When you've got water on top, that varies by, I don't know, 10 degrees, something like that. Cuando hay agua encima, la variación es mucho menor, alrededor de 10 grados. So that's not also, not only uh, visually a nice feature, it's also technically a good solution. No solamente es bueno visualmente, sino que técnicamente es una buena solución. So it's just some uh, impressions of other parts of the building, like this, uh, this um, bar. I want to close the lecture. Here you see something w w which would take too much time to uh, talk this through. That's a cantilever. Mucho tiempo de describir. There's a cantilever of 16 meters. Tiene 16 metros. So when the building was erected, cuando se construyó el edificio, this part here esta was parte su supported from underneath. Se sostuvo desde la parte inferior. After it it was up y to the top. Vez, y una vez que se levantó hasta lo más this, alto. This, 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 Support has been taken away. El soporte de la otra parte se removió, se sacó. Within uh, the building, you've got a, a diagonal structure. Hay una estructura diagonal dentro del edificio. Which supports the top uh, floor. Que sostiene el piso superior. <coughs> and you've got uh, um, vertical columns. Y hay columnas verticales. Which in, during the building process, when it was supported, que durante el proceso de edificación, took pressure, tomaba took presión, the from, from tomaba above. la presión de la parte and superior. After it was taken away, it became a, a how do we call it suction member, a hanging member. Y una vez que yeah. se resacó, and se, the, the whole quedaron yeah. como tensores. And the whole building moved by about five centimeters. El edificio se movió ¿cuántos centímetros? Five. Cinco centímetros. Yeah. And the cladding has been erected five centimeters off center and it's now straight. Y el revestimiento se construyó cinco centímetros fuera del centro. And the main problem was y el peor problema fue the connection between the partition walls, dry walls la conexión de, de las eh, particiones and the cladding. y el revestimiento. So the cladding hangs. Por lo tanto, el revestimiento the floors do that. Cuelga y se mueve. It's easy. The drywall stands. It is fixed here. Does that. <laughs> so that's the tricky bit. Esa es la parte. Okay. Complicada. Just a few impressions. And that's my. Advice, whatever you do, do it with passion. <laughs> <laughs>